Hallelujah. Let's start with Matthew chapter 6. This is Jesus himself teaching on the kingdom. I'll begin my reading from verse 9. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus is teaching his disciples how to pray. In fact, when you read Luke's account, for, for time sake will not turn there, but Luke's account of this came as a response. The disciples said, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples to pray. And then Jesus began to caution them on a few things. And then we get to verse 9 here. He says, after this manner, pray. Now, we are not teaching necessarily on prayer tonight. But he said, after this manner, not by this recitation. There is nothing wrong with reciting it. But he's teaching you a protocol to prayer. He's saying, when you want to approach prayer that is effective in this kingdom, this must be your approach. Number one, when you pray, you are approaching Abba, Father. That your prayer must be patterned after a consciousness that the one you are coming to is Abba. Abba there is Father. It means source. It means sustainer. It means defender. So that when you come to God, you do not come to him as though you have plan B. Your approach to prayer must be that you are Abba, the only one who is able to hear, to protect, that all things come from you. Are we together? And then number two, he says, which art in heaven. So he gives you an information that even though the Father is everywhere, but that you are dealing with a God who is in a dimension that is not physical, that means faith will be required for that communication. Which art in a realm, that is not physical and then number three he says hallowed be your name that means do not allow familiarity just because he is father do not allow familiarity to corrupt your understanding he says hallowed be your name approach him with the spirit of reverence as touching what he represents then he says when you are done past that the next port of call is thy kingdom come this is what i want to discuss briefly thy kingdom come he's teaching you how to pray so he says come to the father and that you come by faith which art in heaven and then you come with the spirit of reverence acknowledging him as touching all that he represents and then in making any request at all in order of priority that every time you have an opportunity to make any request, your prayer should be your kingdom come. Do you know why this is so? Because every other thing you are about to ask, you will need to ask it simply because the kingdom has not come. He's saying if the kingdom of God actually happens and manifests in your life, many of the things you would want to ask for, you may not need to ask for it. That the fact that you have many prayer requests, they are a report card that the fullness of the kingdom has not come. Because that when the kingdom truly comes, all that will be left in your prayer is worship. Because the kingdom has a character of making sure that there is no deficiency in your life. So please keep that scripture there. Thy kingdom come. Jesus now is teaching us that in all of your requesting anything from the Father, he says don't be foolish to just ask petty things. That when you get into a, the kingdom, a kingdom mindset, you ask him for the kingdom. What is the kingdom? The kingdom here represents the fullness of the atmosphere, the fullness of the culture, and the fullness of the life of God at work. The fullness of the atmosphere. The fullness of the culture. And the fullness of the life of heaven. He says pray that that atmosphere. Pray that that culture. And pray that that life. The very life of God. The very atmosphere of God. The very culture of heaven. That you pray that it superimposes your life. And then he says something very important. He says, this is what you should ask the Lord to do. 
ask the father that his kingdom comes and then he also tells you how the kingdom comes he said your kingdom only comes when your will is done there is an information here that you have to understand he tells us what is necessary for our excelling in the kingdom that it is the presence of the kingdom in our lives then he tells us what must happen for the kingdom to come he says that anywhere the will of god is allowed to find expression his kingdom must come there unrestrained and then he says that your kingdom come your will be done he tells you the location where that kingdom should come in earth not on earth in earth that earth being you first before your environment because you are an earthen vessel so he says as you pray let your prayer and your desire be that the fullness of the life are we still together the fullness of the atmosphere the fullness of the culture of heaven that it finds expression in your life this earthen vessel then across your territory So give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. I just request that midwife, there are systems of God's mercy while you are waiting for the kingdom to find expression. Because when the kingdom truly finds expression, there will not even be a need to pray that other part of the prayer again. Are we together now? Give us our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. Deliver us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. These are powerful components. But he's saying God is more than willing to do those things for you. But that his greatest desire is that you experience the fullness of the kingdom. Write this down please. The secret to manifesting the kingdom, the power and the glory of God is to know and allow his will to find expression in your life. The secret to manifesting the power, the kingdom, the power and the glory of God is to know and to allow his will to find expression. Please someone say will. One more time, say will. This is a word that if you do not understand, then you don't know anything about the kingdom. Because in the kingdom, everything revolves around the will of the king. Are we together now? Now, in a democratic system of government, is the government of the people, by the people, for the people. So the will is centered around the people. Theoretically speaking, are we together now? So the people decide everything that happens. But in the kingdom, the kingdom should be a perfect reflection of the will of the king. So if the king is a wicked person, the entire kingdom reflects his will. You can know how great a kingdom is or a king is by looking at his system of government around the kingdom. Are we together now? Yes. In a true kingdom system, your opinion does not matter. It is your trusting the benevolence and the kindness of the king. You are called into compliance and you are called into obedience, not negotiation. You negotiate in a democracy. You can get up and be angry. This was the mistake of Vashti. Vashti forgot that she was queen to a king. So when the king beckoned on her, he wanted her to flaunt his glory that he was the king over 127 provinces. The Bible says she rebelled. She had her own camp and she was enjoying herself. She forgot that her honor was derived from her alignment to the king. There is no mention of repentance in Vashti. There is no mention of her saying sorry. She was banished simply because she did not recognize that in a kingdom, 
everything centers around the will of the king now you have to understand this because you see Jesus in John chapter 21 when he rose up from the dead he met Peter Peter said I go a fishing and the disciple says we go with you and then they could not catch any fish and then eventually they met Jesus when they came to eat he made a statement and he says Simon but Jonah he says lovest thou me more than this and he says yes he said feed my sheep feed my lamb then he made a statement he says when you are young you are allowed to go anywhere that you would want to go but that when you become old someone will have to hold you and he will constrain you to go to the places that you would not even want to go Jesus defines maturity there that your degree of dependence is how you are matured in the spirit physically the more you become an adult the more people leave you to do that which you want to do but he's saying in the spirit the moment you are constrained by the will of the king so that your life does not just revolve around your desire and your appetite the act of giving up your appetite to take the will of the king is how you function in the kingdom now let me tell you why many people cannot experience the power and the glory that this kingdom carries it is true that we know that this kingdom is a kingdom of power and that there are multifaceted um, manifestations of the glory and the power and the grace of God many people desire to see the wonder working power of this kingdom at work in their lives the simple reason I submit to you tonight is that many people do not know that the necessary and sufficient condition to become an expression of the power and the glory in this kingdom is that you must go through a conscious test or a conscious demand of dying to your will and picking up the will of the king that your entire life is constrained to revolve around the will of the king that in this kingdom if at any point you are found with any agenda that is inconsistent with that which the king's de the king desires you are a rebel immediately whether as a businessman whether as a man of god so you do not define what you intend to do with your life the very character of the kingdom demands that you are dead to enter that when you get to the kingdom it is the very life of God that resurrects you back and then you now resurrect not to live unto yourself again and information is given to you immediately number one that this body is no longer yours are we together that even though he still leaves you with the power to choose but that there are consequences you have a right to live your life the way you want to live you have a right to make your choices ignoring the government of heaven but he tells you there are consequences then he now he now reveals to you the pattern for efficiency in the kingdom that you must understand the will of the king and pursue the will of the king in pursuing to see the will of the king find expression in your life that is where your glory lies that is where your relevance lies let me tell you this the area of your life that is not yet manifesting the glory of god that is the area you have found difficulty submitting to the will of the king so if there is glory in your health and there is no glory in your finances I can tell you immediately the reason why the glory of the kingdom is absence in your finances is because the will of the king as revealed as the pattern because you see the will of the king becomes a manuscript that guides our life we don't choose what we want to do what is in the heart of the king now it will be unfair for God to want us to know his will and then he's in heaven and we are here so he gave us the spirit of God he gave us the word of God the word of God even the ministry of the spirit of God these are these are provisions that ensures that the believer is never in the dark as to the will of God